Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our virtual Mishnah Berurah here. We're holding Mishnah Berurah Chelik Vav, and we will be learning today Mir Hashem Dav Kuf Chaf Hey Amad Aleph. We are continuing to learn the halachas of the Dal Minim, and today primarily we will be learning about the Naanuim, the way we take and shake the Dal Minim during davening on Sukkot. So we're in Simin Tav on Aleph, and we are in the midst midst of Sif Katan Ches. We're on the top line of Kuf Chav Hei Amad Aleph at the words of the Ramah. However, I'm going to read again from the beginning of Sif Ches just to provide the proper context. Maybe I'll just speak out, up, uh, speak out a little bit outside some of the Mishtabrua that we already covered without reading it. So let's see Sif Ches, three lines from the bottom of Kuf Chav Chav Dalet Amad Beis. Says the Machaber Yenanea B'Shosh Mavarech. We make na'anuim, we shake the, the dalad binim, the lulav and the esrig, at the time that we make the bracha on the lulav and the esrig, that's part of the mitzvah, is to make the na'anuim at the time that we actually make the bracha on them. And then the mechaber told us that we make na'anuim by the first mention of Haidul Hashem Kitov Kila Olam Chastoi when we say Hallel. And the Ramah disagreed. The Ramah says, Uminaanim Bechal Haidu Shayamru. The Ramah says that the Tzibor makes Da'anuim at every mention of Haidul Hashem Kitov Kila Olam Chastoi. So again, according to the Mechaber, when we get up to Haidu in a Hallel, everybody makes Da'anuim, the Shleach Tzibor, the Chazin, and the Tzibur, they make Nanuim at the first mention of Haidul Hashem Kitov Kila Olam Chastoi. Then the Shleach Tzibur says, Yerma no Yisrael Kila Olam Chastoi. The Tzibur says, responds, Haidul Hashem Kitov Kila Olam Chastoi. Nobody makes Nanuim. Not the Shleach Tzibur when he says, Yerma no Yisrael. Not the Tzibur when the Tzibur says, Haidul Hashem Kitov. Then the Shleach Tzibur continues and he says, Yerma no Beis Aharon Kila Olam Chastoi. The Tzibur responds, Haidul Hashem Kitov Kila Olam Chastoi. Again, no na'anuim, not by the Shleach Tzibur when he says Yom Runah, not by the Tzibur when they say Haidu, and so too, so too by Yom Runah, Yirei Hashem, and the final Haidu Hashem Kitov Kilal Chastoi. So according to the Mechaber, there's only a Haidu Hashem Kitov Kilal Chastoi by the first mention of Haidu Hashem Kitov Kilal Chastoi, and the Ramad disagrees. The Ramad says, Um na'anim b'chal Haidu Shayomru. According to the Ramah, we make Nanduim every time we say Haidul Hashem Kitov Kilayim Chastai. Uba Haidul Hashem Shabbat and then at the end of Halil, before Yahalaluka, when we when everybody says Haidul Hashem Kitov Kilayim Chastai twice, twice Shakayflam Oisai Shleach Tzibur Vat Tzibur, the Shleach Tzibur says it twice, and the Tzibur says it twice. Menan in Shtei Pamim. We all make Na'anuim twice by those two mentions of Ha'idul Hashem Kitov Kila Elam Chastoi at the end of Halal. V'chein ba'ana Hashem ha'ishiyah na'amanane eshtei pamim. And so too says the Mechaber, both the Shleach Tzibor and the Tzibor make Na'anuim twice by each mention of Ana Hashem Hoshiana, l'fitche kaif l'maisai. We do it twice because we repeat Ana Hashem Hoshiana. Excuse me, we say it twice. Both the Shleach Tzibur and the Tzibur say it twice. So we make Nanuim by each one. That's what we did yesterday. Now we come to the Ramah, top of Kuv Chav Hayam. And Aleph says the Ramah. Hagav Yesh Aymrim, there are those that say, Sha Shleach Tzibur menanea gamkein kishe yoymar, yoymar no Yisrael. According to the Ramah, when the Shleach Tzibur gets up to yoymar no Yisrael ki lo'elam chastai, he makes Nanuim by that phrase of Yoma no Yisrael ki la'olam chastai, um, avaloi bi Yom runa, but not by the next two phrases of Yom runa beis aharon and Yom runa yirei Hashem, vechein nohagu, and that's the way we are noyik. So again, according to the Ramah, it comes out like this. When the Shleach Tzibur gets up to Yoma no Yisrael ki la'olam chastai, he makes Nanuim when he says that. The Tzibur responds, Haidul Hashem Kitov Kila Elam Chastai, and makes Nanuim. Then the Shliach Tzibur says, Yom Runa Beis Aharon Kila Elam Chastai, without Nanuim. The Tzibur responds, Haidu, with Nanuim. Then the Shliach Tzibur says, Yom Ano Yirei Hashem Kila Elam Chastai, without Nanuim. And the Tzibur responds, Haidul Hashem Kitov Kila Elam Chastai, with Nanuim. 
Let's see the Mishnah Brui here. Ice cut Mem Aleph says to Chavetz Chaim Shashliach Tzibur Haynu Shashliach Tzibur Min Anaya Bahaydu VeYoymar No. According to the Rama, the Shliach Tzibur is going to make Nanuim both when he says Haydu Lashem Kitov Kilay Lam Chastai and when he says Yomar No Yisrael Kilay Lam Chastai. So again. We say, Hallelujah, Hashem, Kal Goyim, Shabbachu, Kal Umim, Kigavar, Lin Chastai, Vema, Hashem, La Olam, Hallelujah. The Shliach Tzibur says, Haydu La Hashem, Kitov, Kila Olam, Chastai, and he makes Nanuim. The Tzibur responds, Haydu La Hashem, Kitov, Kila Olam, Chastai, with Nanuim. And then, according to the Ramah, the Shliach Tzibur says, Yerma, No Yisrael, Kila Olam, Chastai, with Nanuim. And the Tzibur responds, Haydu La Hashem, Kitov, Kila Olam, Chastai, with Nanuim, and so on and so forth. Now says he continues the Chavetz Chaim. Avol biyarmur na beisahara and biyarmur na yirei Hashem loy mananeya. However, the Shliach Tzibur does not make nanuim when he says yarmur na beisahara or when he says yarmur na yirei Hashem. And here in parentheses, the Chavetz Chaim says why that is the case. The Keshayim are yarmur na Yisrael. When the Shliach Tzibur says the phrase of yarmur na Yisrael ki loy lam chastoi, who kamoi has kara letzibur? This is. He's mentioning to the Tzibur, he's instructing the Tzibur, Sheyomru Haidu, that they should say Haidu, Alkein Menanea Imahim. Therefore, it makes sense that he should make Nanuim when he says, Yomar no Yisrael. He should make Nanuim together with them. Masha Enkein, be Yomru no. That stands in contrast. So when the Shliach Tzibur says Yermu na Beis Aharon or Yermu na Yirei Hashem, She'ein Medaber al Klal Yisrael. At that point, he's not instructing Klal Yisrael as a whole. What the Chavetz Chaim is saying is like this: the phrase of Yomar no Yisrael ki loylam chastay. What does that mean? It means Yomar no Yisrael. Say now, Klal Yisrael ki loylam chastay. Say. That the Rabbanu Shalom's kindness is forever and forever. Yomar no, say now, Kila Elon Chastai. It's an instruction to the Tzibur, much in the same way Baruchu is an instruction to the Tzibur. When the Shat says Baruchu, what's he saying? Baruchu es Hashem Amavayrach. You should bench the Rabbanu Shalom who is blessed. And then the Tzibur responds, Baruch Hashem Amavayrach, Lailam Vayet. So too over here, Yomar no Yisrael ki Lailam Chastai. Say now, ki Lailam Chastai. And then the Tzibur responds, Haydu Lashem ki Taiv ki Lailam Chastai. Says the Chavetz Chaim, since that's the, the way this works, since that's the format of Halel, it makes sense that when the Tzibur, when the Shliach Tzibur says, Yomar no Yisrael, and asks the Tzibur, to say Kila Elam Chastai, he himself, the Shliach Tzibur himself, is saying Kila Elam Chastai. He's saying, Yomar no say now Kila Elam Chastai. So, the same way the Tzibur is going to make Na'anuim when they respond, Haydu Lashem Kitav Kila Elam Chastai, it makes sense that he should also make Na'anuim when he says Kila Elam Chastai. But Yomar no Beisahar and Yomar no Yerashem are not like that. By Yermuna Be Saharin and Yermuna Yerei Hashem, he's not speaking to Gantz Klal Yisrael. He's mentioning a select portion of Klal Yisrael. Yermuna Bnei Aharon. He's speaking to the Kehanim. Yermuna Be Saharin. Be Saharin. You should say Kilai Lamchaste. He might himself not even be a Kayan, but he's certainly not instructing Gantz Klal Yisrael. So the same way, at that point, there's a big chalik of Klai Yisrael that's not going to say Kilai Lamchaste even though, in fact, in Shul, we all will say, but the phrase that he's saying is directed at Bnei Aharon. And the next phrase that he's saying is only directed at Yirei Hashem. Therefore, the same way he's not addressing Gantz Kla Yisrael, to say, he also does not say, I always felt, incidentally, that these phrases of Yermu no Saharan and Yermu no Yerei Hashem, excuse me, I always felt that pshat in these uh, phrases are, we say, Haydu Lashem ki toiv ki la'olam chastan. Then the Shleach Tzibur says, Yomar no Yisrael, Gantz Klal Yisrael, should announce ki la'olam chastan. Then he only addresses Be'i Saharan. Why is he only addressing Be'i Saharan? I think that David HaMelech was trying to show that in Klal Yisrael, there is a specific role 
for the teachers of Klal Yisrael. When could it be? When could Gans Klal Yisrael reach the Madrega of saying Kilo Elam First, we need the Bnei Aharu. The Bnei Aharu and the Kahanim, the Leviim, we find in the Torah HaKadoshah that the Kahanim and the Leviim are supposed to be the teachers of Klal Yisrael. Therefore, Davon HaMelech um, uh, instructs the Bnei Aharu, Yomruna Bnei Aharu, you, Kahanim, Leviim, who are always at the precincts of the Beis HaMikdash, and you're used to being exposed to the Kedusha and to the, and to the Shechina, that's obvious at the Beis HaMikdash. You see the Nisim of the Beis HaMikdash, and you're so close to the Rabbani Shalom at the Beis HaMikdash. If you say, Kila Olam Chastai, and then you teach the nation to say, Kila Olam Chastai, they need to be taught. They don't have it automatically. Amuna, Petachan, to recognize the constant kindness of the Rabbani Shalom and everything that the Rabbani Shalom does for us on a constant basis, that's not something that a person just by himself it has it's an inborn trait that he should recognize this all the time. We need Yomruna Be Saharain. We need the Kahanim and the Levim to teach this to Klal Yisrael. But what do you do when Nebuch we don't have a Be Samikdash? At that point, David Amelov says, Yomruna Yere Hashem, Kilaylam Chastai. We need the Gdailim. We need the Rabbanim. We need the Gdailim to come teach Yomruna Yere Hashem. Those who have a true Yere Shabbayim or a true Yere Hashem. We need them to teach the Am and to show them the way and to lead by example. And they should be saying Kila Olam Chastai. If the Yere Hashem will say Kila Olam Chastai and the Bnei Aaron will say Kila Olam Chastai, ultimately we could get to the desired goal of Yom Ano Yisrael Kila Olam Chastai. So you'll ask me that really it's backwards. Really what it should say is we should start Yom Runa Bnei Aaron Kila Olam Chastai. Then we should say if we don't have the Bnei Aaron, if we don't have the Bnei and then ultimately we can reach I think the answer is no David HaMelech is telling us that the desired goal the, the place that we're trying to reach and indeed the place that we have a chiv to reach is Yomar no Yisrael Kilo Yalam Chastai. That's the role of Klal Yisrael. That's not just a desired goal that we hope to reach down the road and we're going to go from Bnei Aaron to Yerei Hashem to Yomar no Yisrael. No, we need Yomar no Yisrael Kilo Yalam Chastai. Every member of Klal Yisrael needs to know right now that he has a chiv of Kilo Yalam Chastai. You living your life, you have to be able to see, you have to have eyes open, you have to be able to see all the time. You have to recognize the Rabbi Hashem's chasadim on a day-to-day basis. Now, it's not easy. It's not easy. We have to get there. We have to grow. How do you do it? That's the goal. That's the path. That's how we get there. But is the olive base. We need that right away. That's not a luxury. It's not a, a it'll, be lo- it'll be nice if we get there. No, that's something that has to happen. It's something that every one of us has to do. Okay. Continues the Chavetz Chaim. V'akohol b'nanim b'chol p'am sh'oinim hoidim. The Tzibur makes nanuim every time they say hoidu. Harei arba p'amim b'hoidu. So four times in the middle of Hallel, the Tzibur is going to make Nanuim by Hoidu Lashem Kitayv. There's the first Hoidu, then there's the response to Yermin Abin Then there's the response, I'm sorry, the response to Yermin Yisrael, then the response to Yermin Abin Yisrael, and then the response to Yermin Abin Yisrael. Hashem. Uba'ana Hashem Hoishiana Hashliya Tzibur Va'akol Menanim Shtei Pamim. Then when we get up to Ana Hashem Hoishiana, both the Shliya Tzibur and the Kohal will both make Nanuim twice. And so too, when we get to the end of Halal, before your Halalucha, again, both the Shlach Tzibor and the Tzibor will make the Anuim twice by both mentions of Haidul Hashem Kitav Kila Olam Chastai. Vim Mispal Biyachidi, if somebody is davening Biyachidus, Einoim and Anaya, he does not make Nanuim. Ela b'hoidu shebetchilas halal only by the first mention of hoidu l'Hashem ki toiv ki l'Olam chastoi after halalu as Hashem kol goyim or b'soif halal and again by the last two mentions of hoidu l'Hashem ki toiv ki l'Olam chastoi that are at the end of halal u ba'ana Hashem and by ana Hashem hoishiona va'ashliach tzibur menanim shtei oh whoops I, I missed a line there 
Now says the Chavetz Chaim, If somebody did not have a Luluv when Halal began, and then while he's in the middle of Halal, somebody brings him his Daliminim. He's allowed to make a bracha of al nutilas luluv on the dalid minim in middle of halil bein haprakim. If he is in middle, if he's in between the different sections of halil, tahainu bein mizmar le mizmar, which means that he's holding at a point in halil when he's between two kapitlach of tehillim. Let's remember that halil is comprised of several kapitlach of tehillim. So if, if somebody finds himself in between two of the kapitlach of, Hill, of Hallel, he can make the bracha of al-Nutilas Lulav. That means, practically speaking, if somebody's at the end of the first paragraph, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, De Hashem, if somebody's between that paragraph and B'tseis Yisrael, so he's right before B'tseis Yisrael, he could make the bracha of al-Nutilas Lulav over there. Then he could do it after Lamay Noimoyim, before Lailanu. Now, Leilonu and Hashem Zecharonu Yivarech are all one capital. We break it into two paragraphs, but it's all capital Kuf Tezvav in Halil. So if somebody is after Halaluka before Ahavti, that's Bein Aprakim. He can make a bracha over there. Then Ahavti and Ma'ashiv are both one capital. That's capital Kuf Tezayin. So if somebody said, B'zichechi Yerushalayim Halaluka, and he's in between Halaluka and Halalu as Hashem, he can make the bracha over there. And then from Halalu until Haidu is one capital. So the MS Hashem La'olam Halaluka is the end of capital Kuf Yod Zayin. Over there he can make the bracha before Haidu. And then from Haidu until the, until the last Haidu Lashem Kitav Kilalam Chastai is again one capital. Not sure if you can make the bracha between the end of the capital and Yahalalucha. That I have to look into. I'm not sure if you're allowed to make the bracha over there. Okay. And just a reminder from yesterday, the reason we make the Na'anuim when we say Haidu Lashem Kitav Kilalam Chastai was because of the uh, bracha and Divra Hayamim, Az Yiranenu Atze Hayar. Then the trees of the forest will rejoice. And that Pasuk we learn is telling us that the Yidden will rejoice with the trees of the forest. That's a remez to the Dalad Minim. And it says over there, Haidu Lashem Kitav Kilalam Chastai. And it says, Ve'imru Hashienu. And we will say, and they will say, Hoshienu, they'll cry out to Hashem to save them. That's why we make Na'anuim by Ana Hashem Hoshiana. And that's why we do not make Na'anuim by Ana Hashem Hatzlichana. Because the Pasuk says, V'imru Hoshienu. That's like Ana Hashem Hoshiana, not Ana Hashem Hatzlichana. Now we go to Siftes. Says the Mechaber, and this is very fascinating. We, we're going to see over here a very interesting Machloikis between the Mishtabrura and the Arach HaShulchan, that I believe all boils down to a question of where do you place a comma in the words of the Rambam? Let's take a look. Says the Mechaber, ha -hu, how do you make these Na'anuim? What are these Na'anuim? ha -na -hu, yodai mi -kenegdai. you extend your hands, holding the Dalminim, mi -kenegdai, from next to you, vahala, and away from you. So that's, you go like that. That's the first step. And then, over there, you shake the lulav three times. So we're going to grab my poor specimen of a lulav over here, which is already way past its prime. And what the Bechabra seems to be saying is like this. You, you have your hands by you, with the Dalim Minim. You extend it away. And then when you're over there, you go one, two, three. And then you bring it back. So, Hananuahu, Shemoilich Yodai Mikinegda, you extend your hand from next to you, Vahala, and away. The Yananea Shem, and you shake over there, Shalosh Pamim, three times. One, two, three. Bahalacha, when you're doing the Halacha, the extending your hands away. The Shalosh Pamim, Bahava, and then three times when you bring your hand back. So you bring your hands back and you go one, two, three. So again, the and, and then says the Mechaber, I'm going to skip the words of the Ramah for now. And then the Mechaber says, and after that, 
you go to a different direction, and you do the same thing. And so to in all four directions, umala and up, umata and down. So according to the Bechaber, the Nanuim would seem to be like this. You have the Lulav next to you, you extend it out, and you go one, two, three. You bring it back, and you go one, two, three. Then you turn in another direction, you extend, one, two, three, you bring back, one, two, three. And so too, in all four directions, and up and down. Now let's go back to the words of the Ramah, right by the ice cotton yud ches for the bare hativ, the little yud ches in the parentheses. The Ramah stuck in over here, what does it mean that yinanei asham, that you make nanuim, that you shake the lulav over there, says the Ramah, toyref lulav, you shake the lulav, or mechas ke and you knock the leaves together, you hear that noise? Bechol nianua, in each shake. So now let's read it again from the beginning with the Ramah. Hananuahu, the form of the Nanuim are. Shemoilich Yadai Mikinegda, you extend your art, your hands with the Dalad Minim from next to you, Vahala, and away from you. The Inanea Sham, and you shake the Lulav over there, Shalish Pabim, three times, and you do this Behailacha, when you extend the hands away from you, Vishalish Pabim Bahava, and again three times when you bring it back to you. And the Ramah said, What does that mean? You shake it. Tyra falulav, you shake the lulav, or mechaske sa'olin, and you bang the leaves, bechal na'anua, with each shake, v'achakach, and after that, matayodah l'tzad acher, you go to a different side, v'oisakein, and do the same thing, v'chein l'chol tzad me'arbet stadin, so too for all four directions, umala and up, umata and down. Okay, that's what the Mechaber says. Now, we'll see in the Mishnabura that the Mishnabura it, it understands this, Exactly the way I just described it to you. Let's take a look here at the Mishnah Baruch's cut membeis. Shemoylech yada, you extend your hand away from you. V'yananei asham, and you shake the lulav over there. Shalosh pam and bahalacha three times when you extend it away, and then another three times when you bring it back. Ritzayin aloymar. What the Mechaber wants to say is ha halacha. The act of extending the lulav away from you. Aisa pam achas. You're only going to do that one time. Aval hana'anua, but the shaking of the lulav, be'esa ha'ilacha, when you extend the arms away from you, oisa shalish pamim, that you're going to do three times. V'chein bahivan, similarly, when you bring the lulav back to you, kishemedi alulav et sloi, when you bring the lulav to you, oisa kein gam hana'anua shalish pamim, again, you're going to shake the lulav three times, v'ayla kamei bahaga, but take a look at the Ramah, where you're going to see that the Ramah argues on this. So again, the Mishnah is clearly understanding the Mechaber that the extending the Lulav away from you, you're only going to do once. So you go like that, and shaking the Lulav three times means that over there, you extend it out once, and then shake, shake, shake. You bring it back, shake, shake, shake. You do the next direction, extend, shake, 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 back, shake, shake, shake. Then the next direction. But you do not extend the lulav out and back three times. You don't do this. No. You only go out once and back once. But at each position, you shake three times. That's the way the Mishnabura understands the Mechaber. Now let's go to Mishnabura Iskat Mem Gimel. There are more stuck in the words in the parentheses. What does it mean that you shake the lulav? You shake it and you bang the leaves at each na'anua. Says the Mishnah Baruch Mem Gimel, Ritzayin Eloimar, what the Ramah wants to say is, Kiskus Ma'at. You only bang the leaves around a little bit. Those who shake the lulav with strength. Until the lulav is almost breaking, who toast, that's a mistake. Okay, that's the Mechaber. Now let's go to the Ramah. Now the Ramah says, Haga, right by the ice cut and mem dalad for the Mishnabura. Haga, says the Ramah, the Ramah is on the Mechaber. The Ramah says, according to the Mechaber, there's two separate pieces of this action. There's the extending the lulav away, the act of extending the lulav away from your body, and the act of bringing it back to your body. That's one component of the nanuim. 
But the other component of the nanuim is that when you have it extended away, you shake it three times. And then when you bring it back, you shake it three times. But again, the extending and the bringing back is only once. The three times of the nanuim, the three shakings, are when you have it away, you shake three times. When you bring it back, you shake three times. The Ramah disagrees. Says the Ramah Hagah. The Ramah says, no, the extending the lulav away and the bringing the lulav back is part of the nanuim. That's part of the shaking. You have to do that three times. You have to extend the lulav away and bring the lulav back three times. Says the Mishnah Baruch Cut Memdal. What's the Ramah saying? The Ramah is arguing on the Mechaber. The Daita, in his opinion, is that Sarich Lahaylech Ulahavi Shalish Pamim. You have to extend the lulav away and bring the lulav back three times. Come on, Shakasav Lekame, like he's going to say later on. Vahadikasav He Atzbahani Anua. And when the Ramah says that that is the Nanuim. The Ramah does not mean to say she ain't tzarech nyanua klal. The Ramah, like I told you, the Mechavah said there's two components. There's extending it away and bringing it back, and then in each position there's shaking. Now the Ramah says the extending it out and bringing it back is the nanua. You could understand the Ramah as saying that all you have to do is this. I extended it away and I brought it back three times. But there's no need to shake. You don't have to shake. You just do that. That's the nanua. After all, what were the words of the Ramah? The words of the Ramah were, ha-halacha va he atzma ha The extending and the bringing it back, that's the nanua. Says the, the Mishnabura, no. You can't understand it that way. V'hot kasav hi atzma ha this that the Ramah says that that's the nanua, ain't ritzoy no loyma, she ain't tzarek nianua klal. He doesn't mean that you don't have to shake it. That can't be. The ha kasav le'el bahagah, because we just saw earlier in the previous sentence in the Ramah, mekaskes ha'olin b'chol nianua. He said, you have to shake the lulav each time you make nanuim. So what does the Ramah mean? What the Ramah wants to say is, The Ramah would say, don't do what the Mechavah says. The Mechavah says, go out, and then when you're out, shake over there. Bring back, and when you bring back, shake over there. Says the Ramah, no, that's not what you mean. That's not what you do. Ella rather, gufa. Do the shaking as you extend the lulav away and bring it back. Ubikiskus and with the knocking of the leaves, Kamasha Kasu Bikaidu, like I said earlier. So, according to the Mishnah Brewer, what we have is like this. What's the machlaikis of the Mechaber and the Ramah? According to the Mechaber, you go away once, you shake three times, you come back, you shake three times. That's it. And you do that in all four directions. According to the Ramah, the Ramah is kind of like on two things. First of all, he, according to the Ramah, you have to go out and back three times, not only once. And also, you don't go out, shake over there, come back and shake over there. According to the Ramah, you do this. You go out and back three times, and you shake while you are going out and back. That's how the Mishnah is learning over here, the Machlokes of the Mechaber, and the Ramah. Now, what's interesting about this is, there's a Rambam. Says the Rambam. Kate said, how do you make the Nanuim? Moilich, you extend the Luluv out, umnanea roisha Luluv shalosh pa'amim, and you shake the top of the Luluv three times, umevi, and you bring the Luluv back, umnanea roisha Luluv shalosh pa'amim, and you shake the top of the lulav three times, and so too when you go up and you go down. The way I just read the Rambam, I read the Rambam to you like the Mishnah is learning Pshat in the Mechaber. And it's very easy to say that the Mechaber came from the Rambam, like the Mechaber so often does. So it seems to be Rambam just like the Mishnah Let me read you an Arach Says the Arach 
He quotes the Rambam verbatim. Ketzad. The Rambam says, Ketzad, how do you make Tanuim? Moilich, you extend the Lulav away. Um and Rosh Lulav, and you shake the top of the Lulav, Shlosh Apavim, three times. Um and you bring the Lulav back. Um and Anea, Rosh Lulav, Shlosh Apavim, and you shake the top of the Lulav three times. The Chain Bali of the Arida, Ad Kan Lashainai. So too when you go up, so too when you go down. Ad Kan Lashainai. That's the, the Lashon of the Rambam. Beautiful. A verbatim quote of the Rambam. Ha <laughs> ha. Says the Archashulchan. Kiloimar. That is to say, my Rebbe always taught me, when Rashi says Kiloimar, you know you're in for a surprise. Kiloimar means, Rashi is telling you, Kiloimar. These words don't necessarily mean what you thought they mean. Kaloimar, that is to say, and now I'm going to tell you what it really means. That's what Yerach HaShulchan is going to do to us here. Kaloimar, what does the Rambam mean to say? Moilich u'menanea, you extend and shake. Mevi u'menanea, you bring it back and you shake. Shloy shepamim three times, zahachazeh, one after the other. Oh, Yerach HaShulchan is not learning the Mechaber. Like the Ramah. At least he's not learning the Rambam like the Mishnabura. The Mishnabura learned like this. You go out, you shake three times. One, two, three. You come back, you shake three times. One, two, three. Mishnabura said very clearly, but the Halacha and the and the Hava, according to the Mechaber, you only do once. You only extend out and bring back one time. Just each time you do it, you shake three times. Out, shake, shake, shake. Back, shake, shake, shake. Now you're ready, ready to go in another direction. Says Rav Hashulka, no. That's not what it, what, what it means. That's not what the Rambam means. What the Rambam means is, you can do it like this. You go out and shake. Come back and shake. Go back and shake. Come back and shake. Go out and shake. Come back and shake. So you do that three times. And you do that in each direction. That's how the Rav Hashulka is learning the Rambam. Now, the question is, how do you see that in the Rambam? And I think the answer is, it all depends where you put the comma in the words of the Rambam. I could read this Rambam two ways. You could read the Rambam, Ketzat, how do you do the Nanuim? Moilich, you extend the Lulav away, um Rosh Lulav Shalosh Pamim, and you shake the top of the Lulav three times. Umevi, and then you bring the lulav back. Umananer Rosh Lulav Shalish Pamim, and you shake the top of the lulav three times. That's the Mishnabura. That's how the Mishnabura learns the Machaber. Or so in that case, you're putting the comma after the word Moilich. Ketzad Moilich, you extend the lulav away. Umananer Rosh Lulav Shalish Pamim, and you shake the top of the lulav three times. But you could learn the Rambam like this. Ketzad, how do you do this? How do you do the Nanuim? Your moilich, you extend the lulav and you shake it three times. No kame after moilich. Moilich you extend the lulav and shake it three times. You do that act three times. Extend and shake, extend and shake, extend and shake. So here you have, it all boils down to a question of a kama. Now, According to the Arach HaShulchan, what then is the key machloikis between the Mechaber and the Ramah? So the Arach HaShulchan does go into that question, but just from a simple reading, it would seem then to be that according to the Mechaber, you don't do any shaking while you're doing the motion of extending out and bringing back. The shaking is only done when you're extended out or when you're back. According to the Ramah, you shake while you go out and while you come back. Okay. So now, let's take a look. So we did ice cut and mem dalid. Now we have to continue in the Ramah. Says the Ramah. So I'm just going to read from the beginning of the Ramah again. Five lines down to the end of the line. Hagav, ha'ilocha v'ha'ava hi atzma ha'ninua. The extending and the bringing back of the Dalaminim is part of the Nanuim. You have to shake while you're doing it. We have to extend out and come back three times in each direction and shake while we're doing it. And we should tilt 
the top of the lulav in the direction that we're going by each set of the nanuim. And here's an interesting one. And when you make the nanuim go down, you should turn the lulav upside down and point it down. So according, I never saw anybody in my life do this. According to the Ramo, the Ramo is saying here, so when you go forward, you tip the front of the lulav forward. When you go left, you tip the front of the lulav left. When you go down, upside down. And, and you shake down. And then you flip it back up again. Okay. Now, the Rama says that you might think that there's a problem. Hold it. Wait a second. We learned that you have to hold the Dalad Minim Derech Kidulai the way that they grow. Now, if you're flipping it upside down, it's not Derech Kidulai. So says the Rama, Umikri Derech Kidilosan. This is still called Derech Kidilosan. Hayulu Masik Aisad Biyadai Derech Kidilosan. Since you are holding the Luliv in your hand, the way it grows. Now, the way the Mishnah understands this is that what the Ramah means, there's no problem that it's not Derech Kidulai, because when you made the bracha on the Dalit Minim, you were holding it Derech Kidulai. When you made the bracha, you were holding it with the top facing up. It's just now in the middle of the Nanuim that you turn it upside down to make the Nanuim downwards. That doesn't prevent you from being Yitzhak the Mitzvah. When you made the bracha, it's not a problem. However, continues the Ramah, the Ramah says, V'yesh bedaktikin, there are those who take care, shaloi lafei chaluluv, not to turn the luluv upside down, keshemenan in lamata, when you make the nanuim going downwards, he brings this down from the Maharil, and the Beis Yosef, and from uh, Rav Shachna, uh, and, and from Rav Yaakov Falk, and from the Ari. But the Ramah says, v'aminik is far the Rishayna, the Ramah says, the minig is like the first opinion that you talk and flip it over. The chay nearly iker, and the Ramah says the chay nearly iker. That to him it seems that that's the iker way to do it. Says the Mishnah Even though you're going to flip the dal minim over, there's no problem of derech yiduloi since you were holding them in your hand derech yiduloi. Ritzayin alaymar. What the Ramah means to say is. Since when you first took the Dalbinim and you made the Bracha, we're not Makbid on the Na'anuim, that by all the Na'anuim it has to be Derek Giduloi. Again, however, Hamadaktikin, those who are careful not to turn them over, that you should not turn them upside down because they're worried that it's not it's not now you'll ask me maybe the other nanuim are also not because the Ramah said that each direction that you go in you're supposed to turn the top of the lulav in that direction so you're not mamish holding it straight up you're extending it a little bit sideways that, uh, Mr. Ruhr says, B'chalal, not a problem. She'en ele matel it's stud, and you're only turning it a little bit sideways. V'loi b'hapich mamish, you're not mamish turning it over. Ma'ashe'en kein bazeh, but over here, when you want to turn it over, im yahapich, if you turn it over upside down, pointing down, mamish yeroi she'ele so that the top will be down, v'soifoi biyodai, and the bottom is in your hand pointing up. V'alkein lo yahafchenu, therefore you should not turn it upside down. You should just lower it towards the ground. After you lifted it up to go upwards, you should lower it down to go down. Shalish Bamu three times. I just got me involved. Rama said, nearly Iker. However, says the Mishnah the Taz writes, the It's better you should not turn the lulav upside down. The Bazay, I say that, Kyle, because by not turning it upside down, you yaitzel all the sheetas. If you turn it upside down, you have to be concerned. Maybe the shita that says you can't turn it upside down is the ikr. I have never seen anybody flip the lulav upside down. I could tell you that many, many years ago, uh, several times, I remember being with Rav Moshe, Zechat Sadev Kaddish Lavracha, on Sukkis and watching him do the Nanuim. And I have the picture very much, very firmly in my mind of him doing what we described of extending forward and shaking a little while he did and shaking a little while he brought back and doing this three times in each direction. He didn't shake it like crazy and he didn't, he just went like that three times, 
shaking while he was going back and forth, and he would turn in every direction, and he would go up like that, and he would go down like that. And it wasn't uh, very extreme, like everything the Rishiva Zatzal did. The Rishiva Zatzal did everything in a very normal fashion. Okay, thank you so much for joining me for Liman HaTayr. The Schuss of Liman HaTayr should be Megan and Gans Klai Yisrael. The Rav Shem should send you shorts and forth. Parnas and Shadukim to all those in need. We should be zaychet to see the BSK of Tzedek. Be well.